In this video, I'm going to tell you about seven YouTube settings you should know about because they affect things like the views that you get, how your videos rank on YouTube, and even the engagement on your videos. So let's do it. Hey y'all, my name is Gillian Perkins. I'm the CEO of Startup Society and welcome to today's video. If this is your first time here on the channel and you want to learn how to grow your YouTube channel and make money online, then start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So inside your YouTube dashboard, there are a whole bunch of settings that are really important because they affect the performance of your videos. But a lot of people don't take the time to really explore them and discover what's there and properly configure them. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through each of them and show you exactly what you need to do. Okay, so the first place that you're going to navigate to is inside your dashboard and you're going to click on settings and then channel settings and then basic info. And there are several different settings here that you will want to configure. First of all, you have your channel keywords. Now these are really key because they tell YouTube what your channel is about and the name of the game when it comes to optimizing your channel and getting your videos to rank well is just communicating with the algorithm as much as you can to help it understand what your videos are about because that will help the algorithm figure out who might want to watch your videos. So you'll want to make sure that you add in some keywords here that give the algorithm some strong clues. Still within this first area, Area, you will also find the option to set whether or not your videos are made for kids. Now you might already have this one right, but I see a lot of people setting this setting incorrectly. They think, well, yes, my videos are safe for kids. So they check that box that says their videos are made for kids. There's nothing inappropriate in their videos, so why not? But here's the thing, that's not what YouTube is asking you. YouTube is asking, are your videos made intentionally for kids? Are kids your target audience? If kids are your target audience, then YouTube is going to really lock down a lot of things on your channel, not let people comment, not let people play your videos in the minimized player, and all sorts of other things to try to protect kids. But if your videos are not expressly, specifically made for kids, you do not want to choose the setting. You're not saying there's anything inappropriate in them, you're just saying that you're not trying to target kids. And then one more little setting you'll want to configure in that channel info is inappropriate captions. You'll want to turn this on probably so that YouTube will censor your captions. And basically what this is going to do is it's just going to avoid having any embarrassing captions when maybe the algorithm misunderstood what you said. You don't want it to be saying something dumb that you weren't actually saying. And so you can just toggle this on to avoid that situation. The next one we're going to talk about is getting your channel verified. Now, if you haven't already done this, take the time to do it because it's only going to take you a few seconds. It's really super easy. You just need to give YouTube your phone number and it'll basically be done. And by getting your channel verified, you will be allowed to upload longer videos. You'll be allowed to live stream and you'll have access to a few other important features. You can do this right away. So no reason to wait until your channel's monetized or anything like that at all. Just go do it now. The next setting you should know about is inside your dashboard inside settings and now we're going to navigate to upload defaults. So inside these settings you can make some default settings for your upload so that you have to do less work every time you upload a video. So for example you can write a pre-written description that gets added to every video. Now I would recommend that you have a custom description for each video but there might be some parts of your description that you want to add to each and every upload like maybe some links to the videos that you most highly recommend or an affiliate affiliate disclaimer or your mailing address or something like that. So you can add all that info in right there. You'll also probably want to change your licensing for your upload default. And I would recommend that you switch this away from Creative Commons because if you have the Creative Commons license turned on, that means that anyone can use your videos and can re-upload them to YouTube. No harm, no foul. You want to be able to control the content that you make, so you'll want to switch this away from Creative Commons. And then finally here, you may want to also disable potentially inappropriate comments. Now, of course, this is at your discretion. Maybe you aren't concerned about anything, but if you want to make your comments be as safe of a space as they can be, then you might want to disable inappropriate comments. And now moving down to the permissions tab, you'll notice that you have the option to either continue to manage your permissions inside your brand account 
or you can move your permissions into Creator Studio. Now, if you created your account very recently, you might not have this option, but most people are going to see this. Now, I'm not gonna say that there's an absolute right way that this needs to be configured, but it's definitely easier to manage the permissions as to the different admins and moderators and things like that for your YouTube account inside Creator Studio along with everything else. So I would recommend moving it, although there are situations where you'll wanna keep it in your brand account. Moving on down to community, there are several little settings that you can change here that can make your channel more of a safe space and help to protect you as a creator. So one of the very first things that I outsourced with my YouTube channel was having someone else moderate my comments. And I actually did this before I even really had any sort of employees in my business. I just asked a friend if they could moderate my comments for me. And the reason that I did this was because I didn't want to have to go into my comments every single day and look for the inappropriate ones because then I really had to be focused on the negative. So if you have someone who you have outsourced your comment moderation to, then you can add them here in the community tab of these settings as a moderator. And that way you don't have to give them access to your YouTube account or your YouTube channel and you can keep things a little bit more safe and secure. You can let them log into their own YouTube account and then they will be able to moderate your comments. This is also super useful if you're doing a live stream because it's really hard to moderate your own comments when you're trying to live stream. Another thing you can do here is to add hidden users. Well, what I actually use this setting for more often is to remove hidden users. So here's why. When I'm going through my comments, if I see someone who left an inappropriate comment, I'm most likely just going to click the three dots next to that comment right there and hide that user from the comments section. But what if I do this on accident? Sometimes you're trying to click one button and you accidentally click a different button. So you might hide someone who you didn't mean to hide. So what you can do is you can go into this setting that we're looking at here inside your dashboard and you can delete a hidden user so that now they're able to comment again. Another little privacy setting you can change here is to add some blocked words. I find this very handy. So by blocking a word, you'll make it so nobody can say that word in your comments. And basically if someone uses that word in a comment, then that comment will get held until you either review it and approve it or delete it. So you can add blocked words here to either block different spam words that people are using in your comments a lot, or if there's something that people pick on you a lot, something that maybe you don't like about your face or a way that you talk, you could add words related to that into these blocked words so that those comments don't show up. And that can help to automatically moderate your comments for you. And then finally, you can decide whether or not you want to block links in your comments. Personally, I like to do this because I don't want my comments to be a spammy place. Now these last couple settings that I'm going to mention actually aren't in your creator dashboard at all. So to find them, you're going to need to go to the main YouTube page. And of course you'll need to be signed in. You click on your profile picture up in the corner and then just click on settings in that drop down menu. So now you'll find even more settings. These are mostly settings that don't affect your videos and your content as a creator, but a few of them do. I don't know why they put them in a different spot, but it makes them a bit more difficult to find, so I wanted to make sure to point them out to you. So the first one is under playback and performance, and this setting is only going to affect your experience as a viewer, but it's something I think you should know about. Under captions, you can choose to include auto-generated captions if they are available. And so all this means is that if you want to use captions when you're watching a video, maybe because you have the sound turned off because you need it to be quiet, then they will include some auto-generated captions if they're available. And I think this is something that most people want to have turned on, but by default, it's turned off. And then finally, we have a privacy setting that as a creator, I find pretty important and it's under privacy and it is for your playlists and subscriptions. Here you can toggle on or off whether or not your playlists and your subscriptions are public. Now, it seems to me like if you're not a creator, then it doesn't matter that much whether your playlists and subscriptions are public or private. You might have a preference, but not that many people are paying attention. But if you are a creator, then there are a lot of eyeballs on your channel, and so it can really matter whether or not your playlists and whether or not your subscriptions are in fact public, because maybe you want people to be able to see every channel you're subscribed to and every video you've favorited, 
or maybe you don't. And finally, if you are a creator and you're currently under 1,000 subscribers, then check the description box down below and look for a link to sign up for my brand new workshop called Three Secrets to Reach 1,000 Subscribers and Get Your Channel Monetized in just three months. This workshop is 100% free and it's going to show you how to get your channel monetized as quickly as possible, so make sure you don't miss it. To learn even more about how to grow your YouTube channel and how to build an online business, click the round subscribe button with my face on it right now to subscribe to the channel. It's completely free and it'll make sure you don't miss anything.